You are holy, Lord. Yeah. You are holy, Lord. Yeah. You are holy. You are my reason. You made my life worthwhile. You are my song, Lord. The reason why I smile. You made my life worthwhile. You are my song, Lord. The reason why I smile. Oh, for it's my one desire. I want to follow you. It's my one desire. I want to borrow you. Yeah. I really want to follow you.
Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. What's going on, everybody? This is your brother in the faith, Pastor Byron Curry with BKC Lifeline Ministry of Conversation to Live By. And I'm super excited about what we're going to have on this great, great day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know what's going on with my system today. It's kind of moving, kind of slow today. Everything on my end seeming like it's delayed, but nevertheless, we're going to go in the name of the Lord. God bless you, Sister Erica Smalls, Sister Leslie Carter, Ricky Jones. Good morning to each and every one of you on this morning. Good morning to you, Sister Melissa Woods, Brother Woods. Good morning to you, uh, Richard Daniels. Good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, to John, John Sr., Antoine Waters, Focus Waters, good morning to you. Good morning to all my beautiful people in the Lord on today. Are y'all excited about moving forward today? Are you excited about being what God is expecting you to be? He planned for you to be, and that is the righteousness of him in the earth. The light that sitteth upon a hill that cannot be hidden. Let's glorify the name of the Lord on this morning. Sister Norwood. Good morning to you. Good morning to you, Sister Walt Towers. Good morning to Ferguson. Good morning to you. So glad to be in the number with you all on this day. I'm going to go right quickly to a commercial break, and I'm going to be right back. Hey, whoever you want on this broadcast, it's going to be real good today. God has a blessing, and he has a store for each and every one of us. And I'm so ready for that blessing. Are you ready for that blessing? Well, my beloved brothers and sisters, I will be, be right back after this commercial break. We're going to get right into this discussion. I'll see you next Good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning to you. This is your brother in the faith, Pastor Byron Curry with BKC Lifeline Ministry, a conversation to live by. I'm super excited about helping you start your day on today. Good morning, Henderson. Good morning to you. Good morning uh, to you, Sister Morgan. Good morning to you. Richard Daniels, I see you out there, my brother. Good morning to you. Mary Hampton, good morning to you. Let's go into a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day that you have already predestined for us. We thank you for the provisions you already have lined up for us. We thank you, Father God, that you have already predestined us to be the righteousness of you in the realm of the earth today. Lord, set us. You set us on a hill. You set us on a hill and we cannot be hidden. God, you expecting us to expose holiness and righteousness goodness and compassion and agape love to humanity today so god as we go forth today order our footsteps today order our footsteps in such a way father god that we glorify your name father your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path let us light the path for father god friends families loved ones co-workers community uh leaders father those ones that you give us opportunity to be in their presence today let us shine so that, Lord, that those ones that will see the great light in us will glorify you, Father, which is in heaven. Lord, let us be able to draw those ones night to you based on how we even love our brothers and sisters in the Lord. You said through Jesus Christ, our Lord, that they will know that we are your disciples by how we love one another. Let the love between the saints, the brothers and sisters, of the most high God be authentic and genuine today. No matter where we are today, whether we're on our jobs, we in the community, wherever we serve it today, if we come across one of our brothers and our sisters with kindred spirits, because the Bible says, how can two 
work together except they agree. Let us, Father God, show the love for each other from heart to heart. Let others see the joy that we have in coming into contact with each other. That, Father, that your love will radiate upon our jobs, community, family, wherever we are today. Let us exemplify kingdom. And when it's all said and done, God, you get the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Let those heart emojis go up, my brothers and sisters, right now. Let those heart emojis go up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let those praises ring today. Uh, Romans chapter 15 and 4 says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope and this is what we're on this live for to make sure that you have patience and comfort throughout today by the scriptures you're going to hear today we pray that these scriptures are written on the tablets of your heart that you will not be overwhelmed or overtaken by your challenges of today but that you will meet your challenges today sister nikki with the joy of the Lord and with the strength of the Lord and with the grace of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Glory to God. So my beloved brothers and sisters, we're getting ready to get into this word on this morning. And I'm super excited about this word this morning. We are going into Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13 is our scripture today and where we're taking our text from. And it says, for brethren, Ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for the occasion to flesh, but by love service, by the love served one another. Okay, by the but by love serve one another. Let me read that one more time. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for the occasion to flesh, but by love serving one another. Can I read that from another translation? Let me read that from another translation. And I want to read it from the translation of the NLT, the New English Version. Hallelujah. We're going to read that and watch what it says here. My God from Zion. I love how that reads, too. Uh, this is one of my 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 good friends he normally comes from this particular version but listen what it says for you have been called to live in freedom listen sister nikki for you have been called to live in freedom my brothers and sisters but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature instead Use your freedom to serve one another in love. Wow. <laughs> Let me read that one more time. Let me read that one more time before we dig in. Before we get ready to unpack this. Let's dig in this. Let's read this one more time. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, Use your freedom to serve one another in love. I want to talk on a topic this morning, how to use your freedom, how we all need to use our freedom. Oh, my God, from Zion. The Lord didn't free us for naught. OK, now we've been in this this week. We've been talking about the influence of God. The influence of God, being influenced by God, if we're going to be successful in 2023, we need to be impacted by what God says instead of being impacted um, on what man says or our friends say or our family say. We need to be more influenced by the word of God. What is influence? Influence is the, capa uh, the, the capacity to have an effect on the character development or behavior of someone or something or the effect itself let me say that again here's what the definition is it's on the screen influence the the capacity to have an effect on the character the development or the behavior of someone or something or the effect itself influence 
Well, if God's going to influence our life, God is looking to impact our character, affect our character, uh, affect our uh, development to develop us in the way that he planned, listen, for us to be in. Listen, he, he's looking to influence our behavior, to fix our behavior. He's looking to uh, affect us, hello somebody, with his word that our behavior in the world will be noticed that we're not of the world. I told you on the other day that Jesus says in John chapter 17 that we, I'm, I'm, my, the words that I gave them, they are hated by the world and they are in the world, but not of the world as I'm in the world and not of the world. He says that the very word that God allowed him to give unto his disciples affected the life, the character, the behavior of those disciples in so much that it showed the world that they were no longer attached to them. I want to share something with you ones who are on here today. There is no way you can get the word of God, receive the word of God, and let it be impactful to your life, and it doesn't tell on you. Wait a minute. Say that one more time, Pastor. You cannot have the word received, and it impacts your life, and you not be revealed or you be seen. It's going to expose you to the world. It's going to show the world that you are different. It's going to show the world that you are separated. It's going to show the world that you have an indifference. Hello, somebody. So I want you to understand that it's not so much of personal that you've done something to somebody. Okay. 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 <laughs> Let what you say, Sister Nikki, right? I'm going to tell on you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but I, I want you to understand that the, the 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 word itself is going to expose you and let people know who you really are. So that's why you can't hide on your job among your coworkers, or among your boss. Uh, you can't hide among your family members anymore. You can't go to the barbecue and just blend in. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. You can't go to the family reunion and just blend in. Oh, no, 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 no. The word is going to expose you. Your character changes. Your conversation changes. Your outer continents change because there is no way you can taste and see that the Lord is good and remain the same. Your behavior is going to change. Uh, if, you, if your behavior has changed since you have come into the knowledge of God, just say amen. That's all I need you to do. Just say amen. So the influence of God is what we really actually need. The Bible also say, let your light so shine before men that men should see the good works and glorify the father, which is in the, the glorify the father, which is in heaven. So I want you to understand something that we supposed to stand out and show who we are mostly influenced by. OK, let me. I'm trying to stay calm with this. I don't want to just run over it. I want you to I want you to get it. I want it to be downloaded in your spirit. The, we supposed to show who we are mostly influenced by. We don't supposed to be like everybody, Sister Newton. Our conversations don't supposed to be like everybody, Sister Walthour. We should not be walking in the way that everybody else is walking, Sister Sadler. The Bible says, straight is the gate, broad is the way. Oh, come on, somebody. Everybody that, that, that is not of God is taking the broad way. Everybody who doesn't believe in the gospel or the truth is walking in the broad way. I don't want you to make the, the I don't want you to, to make the wrong assumption that the broad way doesn't have success on it, that the broad way doesn't have popularity on it, that the broad way doesn't have riches on it. You would only fool yourself if you believe that. The broad way carries just about as much of success, uh, riches, and all of that stuff that the kingdom carries. OK, yeah, that's why you can get yourself messed up when it comes down to riches, 
money, clout, power, because the, the Broadway offers that and carries that as well. Look at Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. The devil even takes Jesus up into a high mountain, shows him all of the world and his and the glory of it, and then offers that to Jesus. So the broad way, uh, Brother Pete, has success on it too. I told the church on the other on the other Sunday, I said, there is an evil success and a righteous success. There is a wicked success. And there is a holy success. And you got to determine which success you're after. Because if you don't, my beloved brothers and sisters, what seemeth right unto a man, the end thereof is the ways, the, 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 the way of death. So I need you to understand something, my beloved brothers and sisters. We got to be conscious in this day. The Bible says straight is the gate. Narrow is the way that leadeth to life. So it's not going to, and it said there are not many few, only few that find it, it, okay? Not many will find it, but few, few will find it. My question to you is, is are you willing to find it? Come on, somebody. Are you willing to find it? Because if you're willing to find it, you don't, you don't matter that the road is narrow, you won't matter that it's just a few people on there. And it, listen, whatever it takes for you to go through that narrow path, you're willing to subject yourself and humble yourself to the walk. Now, here's what the Bible says, Sister Jeanette Ferguson. Walk in the spirit that you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I don't want you to make a wrong, have yourself in the wrong understanding that the Broadway have a whole lot of people in flesh, but also in the narrow way, there's a whole lot of people in the flesh. But the difference between the narrow and the broad, the narrow will crucify the flesh on the journey, but the broad will keep their desire and they will pursue their fleshly will and desire and go after things that the Bible, that God permits them not to go after. But I don't want you to get this misconstrued. Both of the paths have fleshly folk on it. The difference between those individual is, is one is willing to crucify the flesh and the other one is willing to support the flesh. The question is, for you ones on this live this morning is, which one are you choosing today? Joshua says, as for me in my house, we shall serve the Lord. Y'all not saying nothing to me. Uh, the, the, nobody can make that decision for your house. Nobody can come. Up, I hope nobody can come up in your house and make that kind of decision. You need to make that kind of decision yourself because whatever you speak out of your mouth, your word is bond. You got to own up to your confession. My beloved brothers and sisters, I need you to hear this. So, so watch this. So, uh, uh, influences the capacity to have an effect on the character of the individual. Have control over their development. I need y'all to come with me. Having influence is to help them in developing and shaping their behavior in this next season right here it, it's going if you're being going to be successful it depends on how your behavior is it depends on your character it depends on or uh, if you are developed right in the gospel okay listen to me my beloved brothers and sisters stop worrying about your past Oh, God, thank you, Holy Ghost. Stop work. I need somebody to type down in the chat with exclamation points. I don't need to worry about my past. D come on, somebody. D just shorten it. I'm not worried about my past. That's a, just, just shorten it. I'm not worried about my past. Why am I not worried about my past? If you have accepted Christ Jesus, 
old things are passed away. Can I tell you what God does? I shared this on the other day. What God will do for you when you accept Jesus Christ is that he will go back in your past where you can't go. I need you to get this. I need you to get this, Sister Nakia Smalls. I need you to get this. Watch this. He will go back in your past where you are guilty. Good God Almighty. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. I'm about to shout. He'll go back in your past where you are guilty, and he will put not guilty there. Why would God even wipe out your past? Why would he put in your past not guilty? Because he doesn't want your past to be a hindrance to you reaching your destiny and your future. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. He does not want your past to haunt you, to prevent you from getting to your future and your your destination that he planned for your life. My beloved brothers and sisters, why is God giving you a future? Because God needs to correct your relationship with him. You and I need to correct our relationship with him. So what God does is he puts you in a present state that he can fix your future state. And while you in your present state, he gets you to get your character right. Ah, ah. In your present state, you get your character right. Oh, he affects your character. He develops you and he fixes your behavior. Why? Because when you get ready, oh, God help me. When you get ready to receive your future, he's already planning for you. You have to have the right behavior. You have to be in the right character. You have to be developed in the way that he's calling you to the wedding feast. The Bible says that God had gave a parable through Jesus of a man who invited those ones to the wedding feast because his son was getting married. He sent out those ones with the message to come to the marriage and the ones who he sent them to they would not come to the marriage feast they said they had their fields to plow they had other things they had to attend to and so now the master sends out he sends out some more messengers they go out and he said i want you to go get those ones that's wrong those ones who <laughs> those ones who are good those ones who are not right i want you to invite everybody to the wedding feast i need you to understand something boy when the jews did not accept jesus christ as as the son of the living God, when they did not at that period and season and time that they did not accept Jesus as the lamb sacrifice, that they were supposed to be the bridegroom and Jesus supposed to be the bride, it opened up the gate. Hello, somebody. It opened up the way for basically those ones who was not invited at first. I just need about 50 of you right now to just go down and tell the Lord thank you in the chat. I need you to go down there and throw down thank you, Lord, in the chat. Because if it had not been for the denial of the Jews, if it wasn't for the way that that thing went in history, some of us, y'all ain't saying nothing to me, a lot of us would not have the right to the tree of life wouldn't have the right to relationship with god thank you lord jesus the influence watch this my beloved brothers and sisters john chapter 8 and 36 says if the son therefore shall make you free Ye are free indeed. We heard a lot of people say the scripture says and there's there is other translations say um uh, the, if the son has made you free, if, if if the son has made you free, you're free indeed, right? So I need you to understand some. If Jesus has anything to do with you being free, I need you to get this in the Holy Ghost. If the Son of God, Jesus, Yash, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, the Lamb, the Bright and Morning Star, the Lily of the Valley. If this son of the living God, your Lord, my Savior, has anything to do with you being free, the scripture says, 
ye shall be free indeed. I just need some people to throw those heart emojis up right now and thank God for you being free. I don't know if I'm free. Well, when you accepted Jesus Christ, are you still the same person you used to be? Do you still go to the same places you used to go? Do you still respond in conversation the way you used to? Do you still deal with the same company you used to? Well, if you have any of those testimonies that you don't, then you are free indeed. Is your mind still in shackles and bondage to the system of this world? Well, if if you say no, then you are free indeed. Are you still going out on your marriage, cheating on your wife or cheating on your husband? Are you still out there having sexual relations and you're not married? If Are you still doing that? If you say no and you are in Christ, you are truly free indeed. I just need some people to throw down in the chat with exclamation points. Yes, I am free. <laughs> I heard the old saints say, I am free, praise the Lord, I'm free, no longer bound, no more chains holding me, my soul is resting, y'all ain't gonna sing with me, and it's just a blessing, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. I'm free from lying. I'm free from backbiting. I'm free from slandering. I'm free from lust. I'm free from, y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. I'm free from that very thing that will drive me, y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me, to my death. The Bible said, good God Almighty, the Bible says it is the lust of man that drives him to his, to, to his death. Hello, somebody. It drives him to his destruction but I am free from my lust. I have power to put to death the cravings of my flesh. Is that any testimony on here today? Is that any testimony on here today? Oh, come on, somebody. I need somebody to go ahead and help me out today and let the people know I am free from the power of my flesh taking me into places I don't supposed to be. I am free from my heart. Yo, hold on a second. What did you say? I'm free from my heart. What do you mean by that? The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I'm free from not knowing my heart and letting my heart get me in all kinds of crazy stuff. And I'm co-signing to my deceitful and wicked heart. No, because I got God today. God's word came in and showed me the very intent of my heart. I know what my heart is trying to make me to do, and I get to veto stuff in my heart. How do I know this is even true? David, first of all, said, creating me a clean heart, renewing me a right spirit. Oh, God, not only that, the Bible says, guard your heart with diligence. How can I guard my heart with diligence if I don't have authority to guard it? God said, I delivered your heart and then gave you control back over your heart. So you can, you can manage what comes out of your heart and what comes in your heart. I need about 50 people on here to go ahead and tell the truth and shame the devil. I got more control than what I used to have. Can I have, oh, can I get some help on this broadcast for somebody to go ahead and say it out loud with exclamation points? I have more control than I had before. I can be able to stop myself from going into areas of life that I used to have no control over. I can stop myself when I get the urge to go smoke marijuana. I can stop myself from getting to be a belligerent drunk. I can stop myself from lying. I can stop myself from getting into relations with somebody who is not my wife, not my, my husband. Y'all not going to say that to me. I'm talking to somebody on here. I have the power now to not go in the urges of making a, a, a catastrophe of my life like I used to. Y'all, I have power. I need somebody to throw down in the chat. I got power. I got power. How? 
How do you have this power? John says in 15 and 3, now, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. What Jesus did is he cleared up the matter. Can I get about 40 of you on here to say, thank you, God, for clearing up the matter. Wait a minute. When I used to hear this stuff from the world, when I used to hear this other doctrine, when I used to hear these other conversations that had me all confused and had me all discombobulated, I didn't have a real answer. Y'all not saying nothing to me. Now God cleared up some things for me when he spoke the word. Good God Almighty. Can I, can I get some Somebody to say God's word trumps every other word. Listen, listen, there's a whole lot of vines out there, but they not the true vine. Y'all not talking to me on here. What did you just say? There's a lot of vines out there, but they're not the true vine. In John chapter 15, the Bible says in verse one, my father is the husband man and I am the true vine. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. Oh, I need you to understand something. There's a whole lot of false vines out there with a whole lot of word, but none of those words cleanse you. Y'all help me preach this morning. All of those ones who conversating, is it clearing up some things for you? Is it cleaning up some things for you? Or it still got you in a confused state? Does it still have you stagnated? Does it still have you where you can't move? Does it still have you oppressed and depressed? Do they words still have you crying and feeling sorry for yourself? Do they words still keep you in shame? Well, if you open up your ears and the Bible says, hear what the spirit is saying to the church. If you have an ear, Jesus says, let those ones hear what the spirit has to say to the church. Jesus will clear up some matters in your life. There I stand at the door and knock, the Bible says, any man who opens up. Why don't you open up your heart to God today? Why don't you open up your life to God today? Let him in the house. Come on, somebody. Can somebody help me to encourage somebody on here? Let him in the house. Come on. I dare you to throw that down in the chat with exclamation points. Go ahead and tell him. Let him in the house. Why you still got him on the front porch knocking on the door? Let him in the house. You know you can't move that couch by yourself. You know you can't move that china cabinet by yourself. You need some help. Oh, <laughs> we need some help. Lord, y'all, I got to leave. <laughs> I got to get off of here. We got to come back and we got to deal with the rest of this. I got something I got to do. I got to get out of here. But listen, I need you to understand. You need to let him in the house. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, mm -hmm. let him in the house. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and know that God will do exceedingly abundantly above what you can ask or think according to the power that worketh with inside of you. Stop playing with God and let him in the house because what needs to happen is, is you need to be instructed on how to use your freedom. God didn't free you for naught. He didn't free you just to play around. He didn't free me just to play around. He freed us for a purpose. He freed us for a change. And I need you to know how that's supposed to be. Meet me here tomorrow. The Lord's will life last. And let's dig into how to use our freedom. I'll talk to you on tomorrow. Lord's will life lasts right here on Morning Meditation. <laughs>